أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah to all of the Muslim um, space community members. I'm so happy to be able to share with you again on this blessed day of Jum'ah. Um, I'd like, inshallah, to just share a few relax- reflections with you all on the basis of one ayah from the Quran, inshallah. It's a very, very, very beautiful ayah. It's one that's close to my heart. Uh, it's one that I think brings great benefit when we bring our heart's attention to it and our mind's attention to it. So let me, inshallah, recite it for you all. Um, we have in Surah Ali Imran where Allah Ta'ala says, بَعْدَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الَّذِينَ قَالَ لَهُمُ النَّاسُ إِنَّ النَّاسَ قَدْ جَمَعُوا لَكُمْ فَخْشَوْهُمْ فَزَادَهُمْ إِيمَانًا وَقَالُوا حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلِ And this is translating as أَلَّذِينَ قَالَ لَهُمُ النَّاسُ Those that the people, those to whom the people said, those to whom the people said, إِنَّ النَّاسَ قَدْ جَمَعُوا لَكُمْ Indeed, the people have gathered against you. They've gathered or amassed against you. فَخْشَوْهُمْ So fear them. فَخْشَوْهُمْ And then it says, فَزَادَهُمْ إِيمَانًا But this only increased them in their faith, in their iman. وَقَالُوا حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلِ And they said, God is enough for us. God is enough for us. حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلِ And He is the best of those who take care of things, who dispose of affairs, the best disposer of affairs. نِعْمَ الْوَكِيلِ this ayah uh, of the Qur'an that I just recited to you, um, what I find very beautiful about it, very deep about it, is it is kind of the heart of what iman is. It is um, the lub of iman. And lub is like the innermost core of a thing. This right here is like the lub of iman in this one verse. Um, what we have is a reflection of what it means to be a true believer. You know, what it means to be, have a heart that is truly in a state of belief. And by belief, there is a meaning in Iman here that has to do with security, feeling security in the heart and in the mind. We are secure in knowing fundamentally who God is in relation to everything else. That is Iman. To have true Iman is to, in our innermost core, we are secure in knowing who God is in relation to everything else. And inshallah, I'll expand on it um, as I continue. What this verse really calls us to reflect on is, how can I get into that grounded security that I'm describing in this manner as this secure knowing of who God is, how can I get to that grounded place? How can I get to that space we're calling Iman, right? That's what this verse is reflecting back to us and calling us towards. And this beautiful reality of knowing that when all else seems to be looking bleak, when all else seems to be against us, and the world of means or asbab, right? The world of means. What do I mean by the world of means or the world of asbab? I mean that there are many causal relationships that we view in the world out there that um, we are now on the brink of, let's say, uh, some kind of uh, uh, disaster unless we do X, Y, or Z. Right? So if we do X, Y, or Z, we can protect ourselves. So there's a causal relationship between our 
being able to feel secure and protected and us being able to take certain actions, right? Or prevent certain things from happening. These are the causal relationships uh, that we see out there in the world. But these causal relationships, right? Uh, the world of Asbab, there is something that we have to understand about it in our worldview, which is that there's only one true actor. In other words, there is no might or power save God's might or power, right? And this beautiful reality of knowing that when the odds are against us, when the world, the world of the causal relations that we see out there, where that we see out there, excuse me, um, the world of asbab is pitted against us, right? When there is some real worldly danger that we we have reason to have concern for and fear about, that this is when our reliance on God really shines. This is when that secure knowing who God is in relation to everything else really comes to bear. And this is that moment that is being reflected in this ayah where the people are telling these believers that, look, the odds are stacked against you. And the, the people have conspired and amassed against you. And their reaction, because it's fully... Um, embodied that iman is hasbunallahu wa ni'mal wakil. It only increases them in that secure knowledge that God is all I need and He's going to take care of me. He's going to take care of things. That's when that moment is when that iman and that secure knowing really shines. And this is where we show ourselves and others who and what we are really grounded in. Who and what we are really grounded in. And sometimes we learn that we still have a ways to go, you know, and this is most of us, including myself, is how do I really get to that place that these ayat are really calling my heart to these people and to be like these people, right? And to be grounded in that way. But indeed, it is in that moment of uncertainty, of consequence, when we don't know what's going to happen, because it does seem like it's not going to work out in our favor, it's in that moment of uncertainty that the heart of the believer rests secure in knowledge, has that iman, that God is enough, hasbunallah. It doesn't matter what the world of asbab or causal relations threatens us with. The musabbib, the true agent in all of this, that true agent is all I need. I don't need anyone. I don't need anything. I don't need any means out there to reach a goal. God is my journey and God is my destination. God is my journey and God is my destination. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. My fundamental safety and security rests with God. He is my journey, He is my destination. Hasbunallahu wa ni'mal wakil. God is enough for me, enough for my security. He is enough of a guarantor. He is enough of a guardian over my affairs. And he is the only true actor and agent out there. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. There is no ability. There is no power except the power of God. So if that's true, that there is no real power, there's no effective power besides his, who else should I fear? Who else should I fear? Who else should my heart tremble for? Or who else should I be fundamentally concerned about? Especially when the odds are stacked against me. This ayah is saying, no, God is enough. God is enough. He'll take care of my affairs. If I rely on him with the strings of my heart, he will dispose of my affairs. And it may not be easy. Whatever follows next may not be easy. The consequences that are pitted against us may come to fall on us in ways that we would say are not favorable to us. So it's not, so what follows may not be easy, but Iman is to know that I am in his custody, that I am in his custody and in his protection, not in the custody of people, not in the custody of my own fears not in the custody of governments, of institutions, or other powerful actors that appear to be powerful. But no, 
this verse calls us back to this simple and beautiful reminder. God is all I need. And He is the best to take care of me. This is the power of true faith. And it, it is, shines the most in the moment of uncertainty and fear. And it is, I believe, that light that really allows us to behave morally when it counts the most. It is that light in the heart that really, when it's grounded right, it is that thing that really saves us as a human race and allows us to act morally when it counts the most. It is the light of Iman and trust in God that allows us to conquer our fears and to transcend uh, our fears in how we act and exist in this world, how we are in relation to others. It is that light of Iman and trust in God that also allows us to go beyond strategic gain and loss between how much am I going to gain if I do this, how much am I going to lose if I do this. But Iman is that antidote to that calculating mind that assumes that it has the power to change the odds in its favor. That's just not the reality. And instead, the light of Iman fills our heart in such a way that even when consequences are at stake and on the other side we're called on to do the right thing, we have that light to say, I know I'm with God. And I know I am with the mustadifin, those that are oppressed and downtrodden by others. In that, and in that, I am with God. So I know I'm with God. I know I'm with the with the marginalized, with the oppressed. And in that, I know I'm with God. And this is a beautiful thing that allows us to act uh, in solidarity with people that need it the most for the right reason. And we're grounded in this faith that we are with God and in his custody. And it is what really will, inshallah, shift the arc of human history towards something that's more beautiful, more merciful, more wholesome, more just in the way we do things, in our practice, in our application, in our tatbiq, as they say. So I say all of this to say that, you know, I really wanted to just inspire us as a community in this moment. And I hope something of what I've shared has hopefully um, not been preachy to a detriment, but actually some of my words have reached your heart, inshallah. I pray that that's the case. And, uh, you know, that I wanted to inspire us in this moment, uh, you know, to step up and lean into building something more beautiful for our future generations, something more merciful and just. And indeed that requires sacrifice and courage and uh, steadfastness and yes, wisdom as well, you know, we don't want to do things haphazardly either. We want to be thoughtful, uh, we want to be careful. So I share uh, this, especially in light also of what's going on um, with it, in encampments popping up um, across the um, uh, our, our country in different educational institutions where our st students are standing up and they are making their stance known and they want uh, justice uh, or at the least a lack of complicity in the evil that's occurring to our brothers and sisters in Gaza. So I, I hope to, to also inspire those that are participating in these encampments. I hope to that this offers them some relief and some orientation um, and that, you know, uh, that we really are successful as a society, as a, as a community, as a society, as a country, in pushing the powerful players in our, um, uh, you know, that may have, that we could potentially have some influence on to no longer have our governments, to no longer have our educational institutions complicit in the genocide and extermination of the innocent and beautiful people of Gaza, uh, that are losing their lives daily. Um, may God make it so that we are not complicit because this is a real thing. Um, and may God grant them success in what they call for. And may it only, inshallah, be the beginning of many, many good things that we're capable of doing when we unite on good things. Um, when we go beyond, um, you know, petty matters and we, we can unite on what matters most to bring relief to others. 
and we can affect our society in this country in positive and beautiful ways. May Allah Ta'ala not count us as the oppressors, as those who are amongst the oppressors, that are complicit in any way. May Allah forgive us for all shortcomings in regards to um, not living up to um, the call to uh, be people that invite others to that which is better. Um, and, and that he make us amongst those that actually do and forbid the evil. I encourage us all to pray for the students that are um, out there, the professors, uh, and you know, we salute you, we pray for you, you are in our prayers, and all members of our communities that are standing up um, in solidarity or trying to provide some care to these encampments or other any other causes that are truly beautiful and worthy of support. Um, you know, anyone that's standing up in the name of our brothers and sisters in Gaza and in other places that are suffering um, to really uh, help uh, bring them some measure of relief, we pray for you. And inshallah, may God give us the tawfiq to provide care uh, to them. And let us not be divided as a people. Let us hold strong to the rope of God. And let us use this, uh, you know, what we're seeing as a means of inspiration for ourselves to be steadfast in our goals, to not just change this situation, which is so fundamental and important, but also to really change the miserable conditions that we are really seeing as a human species and try to push ourselves out of that with the help of God, Nasrun min Allahi wa Fathun Qareeb, and that we some build something, we begin to build something much more beautiful on this planet, Nasrun min Allahi wa Fathun Qareeb. Allahumma barik lana, Allahumma barik lana, uh, uh, في كل ما أعطينا أعطيتنا يا رب أرحمنا تقبل أعمالنا يا رب زدنا علما وعملا مقبولا عندك يا رب العالمين We ask you, Ya Allah, to accept from us, grant us good in this life and in the next, and save us from the fire. We ask you to unite our hearts in this beautiful iman as you've described it in your words. That you instill it in our bodies, that you make it an embodied reality for us that's firmly seated in our hearts, um, that, that we are able to practice on these things, that we are able to be wise and courageous, and that we are able to create something, Ya Rabb, with your help that's more beautiful than where we are as a people, as a community, as a race, a human, as, as a human race today. برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين إنك على كل شيء قدير آمين يا رب العالمين